All right, guys, give it to me, man. What you got? The moon landing. The moon landing. The moon landing, huh? Moon landings. I think it was fake. I think it was in the studio, man, because we never go back to the moon. Even, even if it is real, we got threatened up there. It was some aliens up there like, what the fuck you doing up here? Oh, we were just coming. Get the fuck back down there. Don't come back up here. We got some shit going, man. We making moon rocks over here, man. Get your ass out of here, man. And it was, you know what I'm saying? It looked like an alley. Like, a, you know, in those movies where they go down a dark alley in New York City, it's all desolate. That's what the moon looked like. So if you ain't from there, there was a whole bunch of moon aliens up there like, hey, hey, yo, Frank, Steve, look at these astronauts over here. They started creeping out of the shadows. What we got here? Light on the gravity? Hmm? Don't bring your ass up here again, man. I see this footprint. Clean this shit up, man. Talking about one small step for mankind. Got your mankind right here. Get the fuck up out of here. They was throwing bottles at the rocket ship when they was leaving. Get the fuck back. But you come up here, man. You stay down there, man. The moon landed. And they, they landed on the moon in the 60s. That's what's crazy, man. When you think back on the 60s, you just think Woodstock, racism, civil rights. And they're getting in rocket ships, going to the moon. That's a scary trip, man. Hell no, nah, man. You got to be brave to be an astronaut, man. Shit be going wrong. They be cooking, burning up. Then you got to come back in the atmosphere. You can burn up again. You got to have balls of steel, even if you're a woman. They were sending chimps out there, man. That's a rough trip, man. I get nervous on Delta just going to Cleveland. Like, we're not going to make it. Oh, God, no. They leaving the planet and coming back? The comeback is what's scary, man. Why you gotta burn up just to come to Earth? You gotta sizzle in. Or you wanna come here, you gotta cook. Oh, all right. What if somebody misunderstood? Yeah, I can cook uh, uh, several meals. No, you have to cook, literally. What else? Women's basketball. Women's basketball, right guys? That's in the news now, you know what I'm saying? Women's basketball. He's the fuck back, man. Women's basketball is exciting now. We got beef, we got a rivalry, man. Sign me up for next season. I'm all in. That's what we were waiting on. That's what we wasn't watching women's basketball, man. We need beef, storyline, drama, a fight, potentially. Race riot. Black versus white on the court. Like, give us that shit. We tuning in. We'll follow them all through the WNBA. Yeah, they still at it, man. They still at it all these years. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. I want to see that on the women's court, man. I'm all in. Who needs dunks when you got that? Women fighting? Women fighting, the jersey might come off, a titty might come loose, an areola? Oh, oh, areolas, man. Turn that up, hit the record button, who won? Who won? That's what women's basketball been needing, man, beef. I'm all for it, and let them talk shit, man. Don't be no tight asses talking about classlessness. Shut the fuck up, man. Same people talking about classlessness voted for Trump. That is a classless dude. At the end of the day, Trump is classless. Even if you voted for him, you know it's true. That's why you voted for him, he ain't got no class. <laughs> Unlike the classlessness, man. Classiness is boring, man. Sometimes you need some reckless classlessness. All right, what else we got? BBLs. BBLs, right guys? That's what's going on, man. Big booties, man. This is getting too prevalent, man. Everybody body about to be the same. There's about to be no variation. The BBLs, everybody got the same body. You lose the excitement. I'm getting numb to big booties, man. That used to be exciting. When you saw a good quality, robust booty, that changed your whole goddamn day. You go, oh man, I saw this booty today. You be telling everybody you knew. Man, I saw this one booty today, man, at Starbucks. Oh, dog, man, you had to be there. Not everywhere. 
Now I'm looking for regular bodies, flat cheeks. Man, I saw these flat cheeks earlier. Coffee bean and tea leaf? Oh, she had zero ass. It was real. It was hers. It was organic. Getting the same bodies, man. A lot of people ain't, ain't getting it to match the, the body that they have, so it's like completely fake. So now all you see is the fake. You looking at the work. She walk in, work, 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 <laughs> procedure, work. It's supposed to be subtle, you know what I'm saying? Fool me, like, oh, oh man, I, I wasn't sure, I couldn't tell. <laughs> Hated when the booty and the thigh ratio was off. Like, you just added all that to them sticks? Man, look out. <laughs> you gotta let it organically flow through. You got no thighs. I'm gonna get me a new dick out here. <laughs> Fake dick that don't even match the rest of my body, man. How y'all gonna like that? Y'all gonna be excited. I saw this fake dick at Starbucks. It was crazy. What else? Out of work actors. Out of work actors, huh, guys? Every actor is out of work till they get the next gig. Always remember that. If they ain't shooting nothing, they out of work. From A-list all the way down to the Z-list, it's the same shit. If you ain't on set, you out of work. That's the, that's the job. That's what we ask for, man. Leonardo DiCaprio been out of work. <laughs> if he ain't working on nothing, he out of work. Leo, what you doing? I'm just reading the scripts. Man, you out of work, man. You ain't got no goddamn job. I'm gonna have a job. Yeah, yeah, pick a script then. <laughs> it's hard being an actor, man. You're always looking for the next gig, the next role, and you never know how it's gonna turn out. Actors be excited about a role. Then that movie tanks. Then your career's at risk. You be like, this is gonna be it right here, boy. The budget is 80 million. I'm the star. It's gonna, it's gonna kill them at the box office. Then that shit make 30 million worldwide. You're like, goddamn. The studio blaming you? Your movie tank, hey, you got any scripts? Nah, we out of scripts. <laughs> now you on the couch. Shazam 2 bombed at the box office. <laughs> Bomb, tough, exploded, grenades. But then the movie like Super Mario Brothers made all the money this weekend, you know what I'm saying? Chris Pratt, he's working. <laughs> He got a job right now. Chris Pratt got a job right now. What else? Watermelon. Watermelon? Did you say that because I was black? <laughs> the fuck said that, man? Oh, you black? Oh, all right. Man. I had to check, man. I'm like, what the fuck's going on in there, man? How long you had that locked and loaded? Watermelon, man. I don't like how they try to shame black people about watermelon, man. We was making money off watermelon after slavery was outlawed. That was our primary source of income. Then they tried to shame us for hustling the watermelon, man. Take pride in that shit, man. Watermelon good, too. When you get that good watermelon in the summertime, it be sweet and get the seeded, man. Don't get the seedless. Seedless is the BBLs of the watermelons, man. It ain't real, it's not organic, man. Get the seeds in there, the seeds supposed to be in there. Seeds of love, tears for fears. <laughs> black folks, we was making money off watermelons and they was hating, man, propaganda. Every time black folks tried to come up, man, white people was like, man, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves frying that chicken and selling watermelon, making money. Man, that shit was fire. Watermelon is good to this day, man. Stop being ashamed of the racist America, man. That shit was real. Don't be trying to hide them history books. Take the L to the face. And if your relatives was racist, man, take it. Absorb it. Be ashamed. <laughs> Don't be a race in history, man. Fuck that. Blemishes and all, man. Real booties out here. <laughs> Don't be ashamed of your past, America. Let's hear it. I had some watermelon today, man. Somebody was like, put mustard on watermelon, it's good. That shit was pointless. <laughs> it was pointless. It tasted like mustard on watermelon. 
It brought zero value to the whole thing. I was like, what? It just tasted like mustard on watermelon. There was no point to it, man. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Tony Baker. Get Jeremiah back up there, man. Yeah.